Welcome to the Industry Show. I'm your host, Nitin Bajaj, and joining me today is Sheetal Ajmani. Sheetal, welcome on the show. Thank you, Nitin. Thank you for having me. I've tuned into the Industry Show before, and I absolutely love what you're doing here. So it's such an honor to be here. Thank you, and the pleasure is all ours. So let's start with who is Sheetal? Yeah, so who is Sheetal? So first and foremost, I am a um, spiritual being having a human experience. And I realized that that is a bit of an esoteric response. So I am also a pediatrician. I'm a best-selling author. I am the founder of Radiant Living Institute. Mm -hmm. I am a runner, a yogi. Most recently, I've gotten into gardening, which I'm really excited about. Yep. I'm also a daughter, sister, and friend to many. That's amazing. Well, we'll learn more about you. But before we jump into that, let's play a game. We call this the underrated, overrated. And uh, it's a one word response about these mega themes that impact us a little bit, right? So let's start with uh, stock market prices. Overrated. <laughs> what about real estate prices? Mm, can I say overrated and underrated in some way? <laughs> I know you said to avoid long explanations <laughs> with this game. <laughs> but that's the trick of the game, right? It's hard to do that. Uh, what about NFT? Uh, overrated. Crypto? Overrated. And the metaverse? Overrated. Okay. What about uh, cash? Mm. Uh. Both. <laughs> I'm going to say overrated. Okay. And uh, inflation. Ooh. Underrated. And the last one, the great resignation. Um, underrated. Well, thanks for playing along. Hopefully it was a little bit of fun. <laughs> of course, there was such a long discussion we could get into with every one of those. I know. I was saying before the recording, um, I've seen you do this in other recordings with other guests. And I was like, oh, I wonder if he's going to play this game with me because it's such a tough game. There's so much we could go into with all of those. It's all about resisting the temptation. <laughs> <laughs> so... Tell us what is the Radiant Living Institute? What's yeah. the mission, the vision? And then, you know, after that, a little bit of the, the impact, the size and scale of your operations. Sure, sure. So Radiant Living Institute is a place where strong, successful women um, come to get unstuck and learn to live radiantly again. And um, particularly as they're navigating and coming through major life transitions. And they do that through uh, holistic life coaching and personal development programs that combine yoga, Ayurveda, mindfulness, mindset, psychology, and neuroscience. Um, in terms of, you asked about kind of the size and scale mm -hmm. of the operations. So right now I'm a solopreneur mm -hmm. um, and the impact is really one-on-one. -on -one. So I work with clients one-on-one -on -one and in small group settings um, virtually. So all of my programs are um, what could be considered high touch programs, mm -hmm. meaning a lot of face-to-face -face time with me to specifically help you, my clients work through your needs. Um, and certainly I plan to scale and grow this business, the um, impact in the team over the next few years. But right now I'm running a solo show. That is awesome. And you know, the good thing about being virtual is you can help people anywhere they are, right? So but even within that, it does tend to be a little bit of a challenge when it comes to the time of the day and, and the days in the week. So have you looked at and considered what geographies you're servicing right now? Yeah, actually, I have serviced um, internationally, mm -hmm. um, which is really, it's really amazing that with the technology that we have these days that we can connect with people all over the world. So, um, you know, I've served um, clients in India. And so certainly a, a, a challenge in terms of, you know, finding the um, right time, India, Dubai, 
um, Canada, that was a little bit easier to coordinate times. So um, from all over, all over the states, as well as internationally, I have um, served clients and it's just, it's so rewarding and amazing to be able, especially with the type of work that I do, that wherever you live, whatever culture, like we're all have so many of the same sort of struggles and inner um, inner conflicts, inner dialogues that we're going through and that we're managing and that we're um, trying to overcome to live our best lives. And that's what Radiant Living really helps with. And, you know, this is a bit of, a, I kind of get it, but I still want to hear it. You're a pediatrician, a best-selling author. You're serving and you were serving people and helping them be better versions of themselves. Why do this? Yeah. Um, I love the way that you framed that as well. You know, um, I do serve in so many ways um, in my um, training and career as a pediatrician, um, helping and serving children and families. And, you know, there's, um, and then also early on in my medical career, I discovered yoga and Ayurveda. Um, and those are areas that address very different parts of our self mm -hmm. than traditional allopathic medicine does. Uh, traditional allopathic medicine is uh, very focused on the physical body as it should be, as it needs to be. And I think that there's a place for both of these. Mm -hmm. um, what I really enjoy about my work with Radiant Living is to be able to dive a bit deeper into those sort of inner dialogues that we have. I truly believe that and it has been shown and validated that our emotions, our mind, our mental state, our emotional state, the thoughts that we think directly affect how our energy, how we're able to show up each day physically as well. Um, and so to be able to, with Radiant Living Institute, I'm able to dive a little bit deeper into those areas that I'm not able to in my traditional clinical practice. So true. And you know, as you do that, it's extremely hard for, for just even me to look inside or to allow anyone to help me do that, right? So this can be a difficult, well, it's not a job, but a difficult profession to be in, mm -hmm. right? If you were to pick one big challenge, what would that be? Hmm. Yeah, I think... Um... I think people have to be at a place where they're ready to look within, right? Yes. To, to, to start their work with me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm not sure if this is a challenge, but more to address kind of the first part of, of your question yes. that it is very difficult to look within. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things that I always, well, a couple of things that I always say is that life's challenges are the greatest catalyst for self-empowerment. Like it's, when it's those moments when life kind of knocks you to your knees, when you reach that place of burnout in your career or in your relationship or some major life change that you start to really examine and look inward for answers and seek those answers because something in your external world has just fallen apart. Mm -hmm. And we place so much emphasis on the things in our external world, on our external environment and, but those are always changing. They're always changing, no matter what. <laughs> and so when we attach ourselves too much to those things, which is natural, we're again, living this human experience, right? Um, so that's natural to happen. But when, when we attach ourselves too much to those things and then those come crashing down, we start to look within. And that's why I always say that life's challenges are the greatest catalyst for that, for self-discovery and for doing that inner work. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's an honor to be able to meet people where they are in that moment and to help them start to sometimes, often start to listen to their inner voice for the very first time. And then the other thing I always say and is the core of radiant living is that a radiant life starts from within. So, so you know, you reach this place where you're starting to look within. And what I do is I help guide people to look within, start there, and then we start to rebuild the external world 
to reflect your inner priorities and core values so that you're really living from this place of intention and alignment and continually um, fostering and cultivating and strengthening that relationship with yourself, with your core. And I can see it's extremely rewarding. It's hard work, but at the same time, it's extremely rewarding. So kudos to you for doing what you do. And uh, you know, let's look at the brighter side of things. Mm -hmm. What's the most exciting opportunity that you're targeting? Mm. The most exciting thing for mm -hmm. me is reaching women and guiding them through this process, through this journey. Um, you know, I've guided so many women from a place of feeling depleted and drained, um, being in toxic, really unhealthy relationships or work environments, mm -hmm. or um, things like empty nest syndrome for the first time in 18 years, their kids have left the home for the first time and trying to navigate rediscovering themselves or um, transitioning to retirement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these big moments in our lives when we're rediscovering and, and kind of getting our bearings straight again. And so the most exciting opportunity is working directly with those women and seeing their transformation. It just lights me up to see them um, work through all of that and get to the other, this other side of just joy and radiance, <laughs> um, joy and radiance and feeling fulfilled and that they are um, starting to in terms of their relationship with themselves, cultivating greater self-compassion. So many of the people I work with, we tend to be, you know, strong, successful, high achieving, which also, which is wonderful, but also comes with, right, being really, really hard on our, ourselves. And so guiding people through this journey while also cultivating and with a sense of self-compassion and grace um, it's just so rewarding to witness that. And to me, that's the most exciting is seeing that impact and that how it beautiful. translates into their daily life. You know, I just see them doing things that they had long forgotten was even something that interested them or just having more energy to do the things that they love and spending quality time with their family and friends. I mean, just those things that like those intangible things in life that make life beautiful and magical. True. So true. Now, if we look back in time and, you know, through your career profession, if you were to pick out two instances, one that really blew your own expectations, and then another one where it ended up being a failure and you picked up some lessons from that, what would be those two instances? Yeah, so, um, so in terms of kind of something that I've learned as a lesson, I would say, you know, it isn't a failure if you learn something from it, right? That 100%. is a definite core yeah. belief for me that I have and that I hold. Um, and so, um, goodness, there's been honestly so many things that could be quote unquote, considered um, failures or, or things that I did not expect to go the way mm -hmm. I'd hoped or had expected both personally and professionally um, mm -hmm. over, over the years, over my life. And so, you know, each one of those um, have though pushed me to study deeper, mm -hmm. um, to dive deeper into myself, to dive deeper into these tools and the lesson in each of those, in every single circumstance, um, the lessons that I've learned are now things that I have been able to put into these programs to help women, to build this really powerful, concise, and effective framework of, because I tried all these tools. <laughs> I studied them. I studied the science behind them. I um, implemented them and found ways to implement them in my own life, um, you know, as a, um, busy doctor as a solopreneur found ways to fit these in and it's such a passion of mine to help um, to help anyone and everyone find ways to um, fit these into their daily life and so that's my big biggest lessons from 
all of the quote unquote failures. <laughs> and, um, you know, when I say I love being able to help people kind of fit mm -hmm. these tools and the practices into their daily life, you know, another thing I always say is small changes make a large impact. And so, um, you know, really working with, with people to make those small, tiny changes, because so mm -hmm. often we think we have to make really huge changes in our life to see a difference, but often it's those small things that we do on a regular basis. So true, it's and that 1% a day, right? Absolutely, and it has a cumulative effect. That's yes. the thing, it definitely has a cumulative effect on your energy and your overall well-being. Um, and then kind of a, a success, something that um, always blows me away or that I'm really proud of is that um, the my client's success stories and to kind of pull out, I love, you know, all of my client's success stories. I'm just um, feel so proud of and so humbled and honored to be a part of their journey. Um, but specifically kind of to pick one example is whenever clients come back to me months or years after we have worked together or after they've gone through my programs and they tell me that they're still using those tools and they tell me that they've referred back, that they've saved all the worksheets and put them in a binder and that they go back, they still go back to that um, anytime they're going through a difficult situation. And so that longevity of what I'm offering is something that I'm really proud of because I'm sure you can relate. I think we've all been in those situations where we sign up for a program or a course. We make this big investment, which is always really scary, right? To make an investment like that, um, not knowing exactly the result you're going to get out of it. Um, and then, you know, you go, you attend the program or the course, it seems really helpful at the time. And then a week later, you're back in your regular day-to-day -day life and you, yeah. you know, forgotten all of that. Mm -hmm. And so I think we've all experienced that yes. at some point or another. And so the fact that um, clients have come back to me months and years later, still using these tools, still, no, still, you know, it's still having a huge impact in their life. Um, I mean, that's just the greatest compliment. And um, I just, I feel really proud of that and, um, you know, feel really proud kind of standing by the programs that I'm offering. True. One, it's extremely valuable because it grows with you and it can stay along. And, and the other thing is you can use these tools irrespective of what those challenges are. Right? Mm -hmm. It's not restricted to, it's not a analytical tool that you can only use for work or mm -hmm. it's not a, you know, allopathic pill that only solves for this problem irrespective of any of those life changes, when you have your back to the wall, you can go back and use these tools to bring the best out of you. Yeah, really, absolutely. Really like yeah. Absolutely. And you know what I've done, like I mentioned before, and I, and I realized I didn't get into specifics, but kind of all the quote unquote failures and life transitions that I've gone through so yes. many. Um, I, you know, tried and tested all of these things myself, mm -hmm. right? And through that, how I created my programs was I looked back at that and I, you know, so many tools from yoga, from Ayurveda, um, from personal development programs, from psychology, and I pulled together the core uh, foundational pieces that I found to be most powerful. And these core pieces are validated not only from ancient traditions such as yoga or Ayurveda, but they're also mm -hmm. research-backed practices. And I have all of these core foundational tools um, or these six core foundational principles outlined in um, a free workbook that I would love to offer anyone who's listening mm -hmm. right now. And we'll include the link, but it's called Six Steps to Create Your Radiant Life. And yes. you download that workbook, give yourself 20 to 30 minutes to just work through it. There's action items. You're going to be writing things out. And I guarantee you'll walk away with actionable steps. And these are the core um, uh, parts of, of my program. That's amazing. And thanks for sharing that. And we'll make sure to put that in the link uh, as we post this interview. But I think that's something most people, two things that, that you know, are really important here. One, I believe the best services and the best products are the ones that solve for your own problems, right? Because you then make sure that you're addressing every single aspect, every single issue. Mm -hmm. So that comes with a lot of validation there. And the other thing is having the awareness 
that this is something you need because we just tend to go from one problem to the next, from one high moment to the next, from a low point to another. And to be able to pause and reflect and say, well, there is help out there, right? Mm -hmm. You just have to take the time and realize that, yes, I should do this because it's going to make me a better and a stronger person mm -hmm. in the run. So yeah, yeah really appreciate you yeah. sharing that. And yeah. uh, you know, this brings me to my favorite part of the show, which is the one line life lessons. Mm -hmm. So I would invite you to share your one line life lessons with us. Yeah, absolutely. I love this part too. I love this um, part in all of your shows as well. Um, a few of them I've already mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, so a radiant life starts from within. Yes. Uh, small changes make a large impact. Mm -hmm. um, life's challenges are, are the greatest catalysts for self-empowerment. Uh, your relationship with yourself is the most important relationship mm -hmm. and the foundation for everything else in your life. Um, and success builds upon success. So celebrate mm -hmm. your achievements. Love those. And I love how you weaved all of them throughout your, your responses. And, uh, you know, so it's personally to me, that's amazing, right? That you, you reflect these life lessons in your day-to-day, -day, in your practice, mm -hmm. in your work with your clients. And uh, thanks again for pulling these all together. And for our audience, we have an entire collection at onelinelifelessons.com and wherever you socialize digitally. And Sheetal, once again, thank you for taking the time to be with us and for sharing your journey and for offering uh, that workbook, which we'll be sure to include uh, in the comments. Thank you once again. Yes, thank you so much, Nitin, for having me on. It's been such a pleasure to chat with you.